Okay, we've got one or two more aspects about nerve transmission. In fact, I guess I'll keep this drawing and partial drawing of the axon. So we have excitatory receptors, inhibitory synapses. So a given nerve cell receiving thousands of inputs from thousands of other nerve cells. Some of them are going to tell the nerve cell to fire. Others are going to say, no, don't fire. So at any given moment, whether a nerve cell fires off or not, am I recording? Ah, good. Okay. At any given moment, whether a nerve cell in your brain, or anywhere else for that matter, fires off or not, is going to depend on how many in this, milli in this current millisecond, how many excitatory signals did you get, and how many inhibitory signals did you get. If you have a huge excess of excitatory signals, nerve cell fires. If you don't, the nerve cell won't. So each nerve cell in your brain is integrating at any given moment the inputs from thousands of other nerve cells. Is an idea about the complexity of the brain, more than that a little bit. Now, next question here. We've opened and closed all these ion channels. Sodium has rushed in, potassium has rushed out. So now we have a situation where the potassium levels are equal and the sodium levels are equal both inside and outside. We used to have a 10 to 1 imbalance of both ions. Now we're all even because facilitate diffusion. Everything went from high to low concentration. That means everything's even out. So now we got a little problem here, folks. Since an action potential depends on sodium rushing in and potassium rushing out, if the concentrations inside and outside are equal, ain't nothing going to go nowhere. That means the nerve cell cannot fire. The only way you can get that nerve cell to fire again is to restore the original high potassium, low sodium. It's kind of like the old single shot rifle. You fire around and then you have to cock the rifle again to get up another bullet in the chamber. You cannot fire it until you do that. Same kind of thing here. Now, how do we get that original ionic imbalance back again? It means we've got pump sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions back into the cell. Active transport of both ions. Do we remember anything that does that, folks? What does that? What can pump sodium out and potassium in? The sodium potassium ATPase. Yes, absolutely. Here it is. So now two potassium go in. And three sodium go out. Okay, active transport both lines. What happens is that sodium potassium pump restores the original high potassium, low sodium, and now the nerve cell can fire you. But there is a period before you get back to that. And that period is about five milliseconds, maybe even a little longer. It takes that much time to get that original ionic balance back again. So once you fire off the nerve cell, it takes about 5 to 10 milliseconds before you can fire it again. So nerve cells typically cannot be fired more than about, depending on the type, 50 to 100 times a second. Because you have to restore the original ionic balance. The sodium potassium pump is what does that. And once you've done that, then you're ready, for, ready to rock and roll again. You're ready to fire it. Now, there is a problem with that, folks, because what uses, what does the sodium potassium ATPase have to use to pump all those ions all over the place? ATP, hydrolysis. That means every time a nerve cell fires, you're going to have to spend 10 milliseconds burning through ATP like it's going out of style, just so that a nerve cell can fire again. Excuse me? Oh, it's like you better have a lot of it. Oh, yes, yes. That's the next point I'm going to make here. 
Nerve cells in our central nervous system are among the most metabolically active cells in our entire body. Think of this. You weigh, if you're small, it's more for the women, I think, you may weigh 50 kilos. Out of that, about 1.5 kilos is up here. So in other words, your brain mass is maybe about 3% of your body mass. Guess what, folks? That brain of yours is using 20 to 25% of your total body's ATP budget. Almost all of it, the majority of it, to power our sodium potassium pump. Brain tissue burns through ATP at 10 times the rate of the rest of your body tissues. And what that means is that cells in your central nervous system are using ATP as fast as they can produce it. And what that also means is they have no stockpiles of ATP. It's like the people that, you know, they get their paycheck, and by the time the next paycheck rolls around, they've got about 25 cents in their pocket, and their bank account is zero. They're living paycheck to paycheck. What that means, of course, if something happens, or if your check arrives late, you're out of luck. Same thing with nerve cells in the central nervous system. If you shut off ATP production, good way of doing it. Stopping blood flow, heart attack or stroke. Lack of oxygen, drowning, only of a spacecraft without having your spacesuit on, things like that, having a leak in your spacecraft, that kind of stuff. Any of those kind of things that cut off your oxygen supply, within 15 seconds, some of your neurons in your brain will shut down. They can no longer fire because they run out of ATP and they can't pump the ice in and out again. So they simply stop working. Within about 30 seconds or so, enough of them have shut off that you lose consciousness and you pass out. By 90 to 120 seconds, some of them are actually dying of ATP starvation. By five minutes, enough of them have died that you're probably going to have some neurological problems if they revive you. By 10 minutes, most of the time it's not worth reviving. They just you a nice different plastic bag and send you off to the morgue. We don't have, we are burning ATP. Our nerve cells are burning as fast as we can use it. And that may put some physiological limits on just how large of a brain an organism can have relative to body size. When you look at the brain to body size ratio of humans, we are the top of the list. Now, there are some animals, like some of the larger dolphins and whales and elephants, that have much larger brains than we do, but they have much larger bodies. I mean, how much do we weigh compared to a four or five ton elephant, right? Even though the brain's about triple our size. Now, you look at something, think of an infant, a newborn baby. The brain's maybe about half the size of ours, say 700, 800 grams or so. Their body is maybe four or five kilograms. So, they're using most of their energy reserves, most of their energy budget, developing and keeping the brain functioning. That's one reason why human infants are so helpless at birth. They're putting almost everything they got into brain function and brain development, all those major league energy hogs. So they depend on the parents to try to take care of them because they can't fend for themselves. When you look at some other infants, some other mammals and stuff, many times they're nowhere near as helpless as human infants are. But they don't have as big a brain to body size ratio. So there may be an upper physiological limit for an intelligent technological organism, just how big its brain could be. You know, you see in science fiction films, these aliens with these huge swollen heads and these huge brains, they're real common. Physiologically, that might not fly so well, because it would simply use so much energy that that might be about the limit. I was thinking maybe at the lower limit for any kind of intelligent alien that's organized the way we are. Think of Yoda and Star Wars. That might be about the lower limit. When you have something that's about, say, 20 kilos and about this big or so, and a brain that's 
a little more compactified but comparable to human brain and good skills with the lightsaber to boot. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that might be about the lower limit for an intelligent technological life form. So that would be interesting. One day we will find out. One day perhaps we will find out. But at any rate, so we have that with our basics of nerve function. Now one last thing, let me just switch for the last few minutes. I always like this stuff. <laughs> okay, give me a second. All right. So basics of neurophysiology.